These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Here we have the slingshot. I'm not really very good at drawing the slingshot, but here's the slingshot. Here's the, the object that's been pulled back in the slingshot, and it's going to hit this target. And when it hits the target, the target is going to swing up to here. Swing constant. Okay. Well, let's see how we do part A. So, I looked at this yesterday. I saw like just use energies. Right. So. So I know initially I had spring kinetic energy and no kinetic energy, and then after it's shot, there's no spring kinetic energy, but there is, and it all gets transferred into kinetic energy. Sounds good. Looks good. Okay. So the velocity is 10 meters per second. What was the mass of the slingshot? The, the mass, well, it's the mass of the, of the mud ball is 2 kilograms. Oh, oh okay. The, where did we say that? Oh, yeah, she's a mud ball of mass two kilograms. Right. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. What did you get as your answer? 10 meters per second. That seems good. So let's think about the steps there. So here you used conservation of energy. Now there's just one thing to be careful about. There are some problems where energy is not conserved. So we have to make sure that energy is conserved here. Well, what is it that could dissipate or change our energy? It's the work by the non-conservative forces. Mm -hmm. If there's work done by non-conservative forces, we can't use conservation of energy. Well, let's identify all the forces on this mud ball. So what are the forces on that mud ball? That's right, that is its weight. Uh -huh. And there's one other force on the mud ball. Um, I guess there's the normal force of the, of the slingshot. That's right. Now, that is a contact force. We probably shouldn't think of that as a normal force. A normal force is, is thought of when you have an object on a surface. Mm -hmm. The best way to think of this is as the sling here is being modeled as a spring isn't it? You're modeling the sling as a spring, so we could think of that as a spring force. Right. So there's also the spring force on the mud ball. Mm -hmm. So here we've pulled back the rope of the slingshot, so we're stretching it from its natural length, which is over here. And here we have our spring force. Right. And br we briefly talked about before how we need to memorize who are the conservative and non-conservative forces. Do you remember, is weight conservative or non-conservative? Or do you remember what are the conservative forces? I think there's only two conservative forces you need to know this term. Two conservative forces this term are the weight and the spring force. Oh, okay. 
By the way, the way to remember those is spring forces, I'm sorry, can, uh, I should have said the two conservative forces are the weight and the spring forces. The conservative forces are the ones that have potential energies. A conservative force has a potential energy and a non-conservative force doesn't. We've learned about two types of potential energy, right? You've learned about the gravitational potential energy and the spring potential energy. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the weight is the gravitational force and the spring is the spring force. So these are both conservative. There are no non-conservative forces in this problem. So the net work by the non-conservative forces is zero, and that's how we know you were right. The mechanical energy isn't going to change. Okay. Uh, that is something to check, because you, you can see problems where there are non-conservative forces that do work and change the energy. And the one that we worked with mostly was work. work. That was the only non-conservative force that we worked with. You mean friction? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, basically anything but the spring force and the weight is going to be non-conservative this term. However, friction is the, most, is the example that you're most likely to see. That's right. So you're right to use conservation of energy, and you focused on the spring energy and the translational kinetic energy. There's no rotation here. Now, there is gravitational potential energy, but the height isn't changing, so that's not interesting to us. The, potential, the gravitational potential energy on the left would just cancel with the gravitational potential energy on the right. So it was fair to leave that out and just focus on the spring. X is your displacement. Well, we started displaced, pulled back, what was it, 1.2 uh, no, meters? Two meters. Yeah, so that was right. And then you plugged in your mass over here and you figured out the velocity. So you were right to use energy. This was not a good time to use Newton's second law. Um, what, what type of problems is energy useful for? Well, energy is especially useful for problems about distance and speed. Mm -hmm. Because there's distance terms like this, and there's speed terms like this. If there was a question about acceleration, well, Newton's second law would be more helpful for that. Yeah. All right, that was a good start. Okay. If all the mud sticks to the target, how fast is the target moving immediately after it is hit? Yeah, this is a real good question to go through. This, these are very typical types of problems. Okay. So I know that that's um, a completely inelastic collision. Right. So. By definition, when things stick together, that's called totally inelastic. Right. Totally inelastic. So I just use the equation for that. Mm -hmm. our positive directions, that was positive 10. Mm -hmm. And you saw that initially the target had no momentum because it started from rest. The target started from rest, so it had no momentum. The after the collision is what we need to know. And they're going to combine after the collision. Well, we're going to have a 3 kilogram target and a 2 kilogram mud ball. So that gives us 5 overall. So that's 20. And what did you get? I got 4 meters per second. 
And did that come out positive or negative? Uh, positive. Which is what we would expect if we're choosing to the right to be our positive direction. Mm -hmm. Technically, you have to be careful with the signs when you're putting in momentum, although right. this is pretty simple because everything's going in the same direction. Now, how did you know in the first problem you used conservation of energy, and here you're using conservation of momentum, even though this is about speed as well. So how would you know to use conservation of momentum here? Um, well, you probably noticed this was about a collision. Mm -hmm. Well, problems that are about brief, well, when is momentum conserved? Momentum is generally conserved when an interaction is brief, because when the interaction is brief, there isn't time for any external forces to change the momentum. Uh, well, a collision tends to be very brief. Um, so the fact that this was co a collision was the signal that we should shift from conservation of energy to conservation of momentum. So we have here P target 4 meters per second. It's good that you saw there's only one object after the collision because they're sticking together. 